Welcome back to the LPR Trading Group YouTube channel. It's Dave again. As you can see in the top right corner, the recording has started. I am using a new recording software. Uh, over the past week or two, I've been having so many issues with OBS. I don't know if it's because I can't figure out what the proper settings are for the videos um, or, or what it is, but it's just, it's driving me absolutely nuts. And uh, every video I try to record for you guys uh, is just coming out really, really awful in OBS. And um, frankly, it's just driving me nuts. I'll show you a recording uh, that I that I took today, and uh, we'll just close this out here, the volume. I'll show you a recording I took today. Uh, this was live trading that I wanted to share with you guys. As you can see, the quality is absolutely horrible. I've, com I've fiddled around with everything. Um, I just can't get it to where I need it to be in order to properly record these footprints this DOM and all the price action for you guys. So what I've done is I've switched over to Shadowplay, which is NVIDIA's recorder here. Uh, this was actually a really good trade today, super disappointed. I can't show it to you guys. I'll, I'll sort of run through this foggy video for you, but it seems like the recordings are getting worse. Anyways, with that rant, we're gonna move on with the video. Um, so what we did today in the room was I laid out some areas in the room, in the pre-market here. So if we look right here at 921, so before market open, HVCs that I'll be looking for today on the one hour chart, first area is gonna be this 3689.91 hold. Um, I'm, I was really, really interested in a hold of this price and I wanted to get long into this area. If we go into intraday market discussion here, as the market started to open, um, I really, really, really got interested in this uh, 8991 for the wash. So I called it out in there and just said, you know, like have an eye on this area because this is the area if we're going to hold that we're going to hold off of and get a nice move to the upside here. <clears throat> we'll go over here and see what I was looking at. So what I want you guys to do uh, going forward, if you guys are using footprints especially, Build out a footprint chart sort of like what you guys see here. Now what this is showing me is if I zoom in, I can see all of the footprint numbers as usual, contracts exchange on the bid or the offer. But if I zoom out, I get this like high level overview of where the volume is congregating on each uh, candle or each sort of balance phase or equilibrium in price. Um, I can see the congregation of volume, right? We've got some nice volume here. We've got volume here. We've got lots of volume and points of control through this area, et cetera, et cetera. This is really going to help you guys accelerate your trading. And this is primarily what we base our trading off of. This, along with a few other pieces of the puzzle. Being market lawyers, um, you need to have multiple pieces of the puzzle in order to put together a high quality trade. So what was I seeing here? We'll just move this guy out of the way for a second. What I did was I used this chart. Now I call this our one hour HVC chart. So it's just a color coded chart that sort of does the same thing as the chart you just saw before, just more visually pleasing for me. So what we have here is all of the dark purple that we're seeing is lower volume relative to this print or this candle, right? So this is a one hour time frame. Uh, for example, we have this one hour candle right here, I'll just scroll it down. We have this one hour candle right here. All of this is very dark purple, dark purple. We start getting brighter in these areas. We get white in this area. This is the highest volume area for this one hour print. So these areas can become areas of interest for us. So you're gonna have to mentally block out some of this price action because the day is obviously unfolded. This candle was not printed here. This is the 9930 candle going into 10 o'clock. So we mark out this HVC in the pre-market right here, which is going to be a high volume area for us. And this is where we're showing interest. It's actually more so like this. Okay, and this is where we want to show interest in taking a trade. All right, so if I bring back that five minute chart, we'll pop this open. And we'll go back here. This is where that area ends up. Now, market open is 930, which is right here. So this is where the market opened. So we have this area, this level in before the market opens, before the price opens. Now, what happened today was 
I wanted to see a wash off the open into these 90.91s, hold and go, which is exactly what we got. Now, where we could have, or where some people could have gotten patient here, is if we go to the one minute chart and we look at the open and we check out the price, make sure we're on the right day. Yes, we are. Go all the way back here. Here's the one minute chart. Okay, this is where some people could have gotten impatient. And what I did to satisfy my impatience here is I just put on two MES contracts instead of trading ES. The market actually opened up, oscillated around, price, simple price discovery, right? And then we got a flush off the open, which is what we wanted to see. It came one tick from entering our high volume area. Now, this is really fishing for impatient traders to get long in this area for a little push, only to stop them out and then push again. I know some of you guys watching this video are saying, this happens to me all the time. I get into a trade, I get wicked out, and then the trade goes without me. It's because you're not understanding where the bigger players are wanting to play or they're wanting to where they're wanting to participate in the market. Now that we have this high volume area marked out, which is an area like a magnet that attracts price to it, because that is where big money is wanting to exchange their orders. We just simply wait for that area. So price came down. I put on two small little MES contracts here with the intentions on adding more down here. I did not touch yes at, at this time. Once price came back into this area, this is when we started putting on our ES. I think we got one ES contract in here and then we put another one on down here. And this was the trade that we were waiting for, back into our high volume area, because we know that price likes to oscillate between high volume areas. You have to define these areas properly. Now, the way you, tr you should be trading them is when price gets up into an area, don't just front run the area. Wait for a reaction, buyers giving up, sellers putting on aggressive pressure, or passive sell orders getting filled, buyers losing momentum, et cetera, et cetera. Additional pieces of the puzzle, right? These are things that we have within our group that we abide by every single day. This is really the only way to be successful in the market is to have a plan and just follow it every day. I'm not saying this trading methodology is the only way to make money in the market, but it is the way that we extract money from the market. Let's pop this uh, amazing quality video up here for you guys and we'll just see how some of the executions went through so we can see here I'm filled two MES contracts at uh, 9475 so somewhere in here I'll play this a little bit now concentrate on Dom where it got fills on the Dom and when price gets below here what price is doing and where we're looking to get in the trade so I layer out a few more MES down here, right in our high volume area, right? 91, 90.25. So that'd be like right around here, 91, and then 90.25. I get an ES out here at 93.75. I really like how we're holding this area right now. So I'm willing to get some into the trade with the intentions on leaving this area open to add into. I'm not too, too concerned about the MES position right here. We do have um, a stop backing us up here for a portion of it if we do decide to just tank and, and the bottom falls out of the thing. We get filled on our ES position there at 93.75, just dabbling a little bit right here. Market's hesitating to both move up and move down right now. So we're just sitting here waiting patiently. This is about the area that I'm, or, or the time that I'm really expecting that snap below the lows. Um, sellers just give up aggressive sell pressure. Buyers come in prop price, and there we go. We get a nice snap. I'm looking to add the yes as soon as we hold. We hold, and we're at another yes contract. Okay, what is, a lot of people would ask me, like, okay, David, how did you know it was going to hold? Well, I didn't know it was going to hold. Let's just say it was um, an assumption based on price that we were going to hold here. 
Let's watch when we snap the lows again. Here we go. Big low snap, right? So what happened? You see all this red here? The numbers don't matter very much for this recording. But you see all this red? This is aggressive sell pressure to the bid, right? So aggressive sell pressure to the bid. If sellers are truly going to be and continue to be aggressive below the lows, what should they do? Continue to apply sell pressure, right? If there are sellers here aggressively selling the bid, they should continue to apply sell pressure. Now, you're going to notice they actually start giving up and these imbalances start getting washed away, which means the color will change back to white because the buyers have balanced out this exchange. You'll also notice that somewhere around the bottom of this footprint, one of the values on the offer on this side will go green. That's an imbalance on the buy side now. So now we have a trade that's within a volume area. We've established this trade in the pre-market, so we've made a plan, all we have to do is execute. We have um, multiple pieces of our puzzle, right? Volume, we've got heavy sell pressure through the lows and no follow through. We've got buy imbalances coming in. We've also got uh, a divergence that we like to use in the room. So we've got all these things coming together to really formulate this, this plan. Let's play this again right here. You see the heavy selling come back in. Those 50s turned into 100s, 130s, 150s. But what happens? Now buyers start responding on the offer and they aggressively start buying, balancing out, balancing out that aggressive sell pressure. Play it another time. Here you go. Here's our imbalance at the lows. So this is actually a buy imbalance now, right? Big candle, large sell pressure, below a low where typically bad retail is trying to short, into a high volume area. Now we're getting buy imbalances with equalized bid and offer pressure. We just came from a situation where sellers were hammering price under the lows. Now we're equalizing under the lows. It means buyers are coming in because they want to fight this area. So we don't want to try and make the wave in the market. We want to figure out where these types of uh, high volume areas are being constructed and we want to trade around them. So let's play this video again. Something I want you to notice as well. Right down here at the bottom, okay? So there, there, there's four little sections here. The top one is going to be volume, delta, max delta, min delta, okay? So what's very important here is the min delta was minus 720. For those of you that don't know what min and max delta are, uh, if, the, if the, the delta is minus 720, that means there were 720 more contracts being pressured at the bid than were at the offer. So essentially, aggressive sellers being in control at that time. Now, if the min delta was 720, and now this candle has not closed yet, or this print has not closed yet, and now the actual delta is minus 473. Well, they've essentially, the buyers have rotated 300 delta lots back, right? 720 or 350. 720 minus 430, the buyers are starting to pull the delta lots back, which is good. It's showing us participation on the buy side. We're going to play this again. Let this play out a bit here. I put out a few targets here. Why do I put these targets here? Um, this target right here is going to be in front of a larger volume area on the chart right here. It's going to be in front of a 20 moving average. Moving average. I don't trade these a ton, but I know a lot of traders do. It's also going to be in front of some volume. You can see this volume better on the five minute chart, but if we're buying here, our stop is down here, and we're selling here. We're getting this good scalp trade off so we can lock some in, make adjustments, possibly add to the trade after. Let this play out for a second here. I'm going to pause it one more time. Are you guys noticing what our delta prints are doing down here? We were at minus 720. We're now at minus 199. Okay, that means the buyers are pulling this delta back up from a minus 700 and currently sitting at a minus 199. This tells you you're in a good trade. Okay, you're in a good trade. And by the way, um, at some point I flatted this whole trade. 
Um, it was day six of one of the Apex accounts that I'm I'm playing around with. So this was to actually get the funded account. So I just I just ended up flatting the trade. Let's let this play. Check this out now. Sellers were once at minus 720. We're now a positive delta. This is called a rotation, right? Now, catching these rotations and then getting into a trade, you're probably late. Being in a trade and seeing a rotation like this, you know you're in the right trade. Or you have a very good idea that you're in the right trade. Going for a flat here in a second. I flat both. Okay, and that's the trade for the day. So we were in that trade for, uh, I don't know, the full size in the trade, maybe two minutes or something like that. Uh, two ES contracts. I, th I think it was about an $800 trade. Uh, it was a great trade nonetheless. And all we did was use some simple puzzle pieces to say, okay, where's an area of interest that we want to trade where buyers and sellers could possibly interact with each other aggressively? Uh, and if sellers are in control, this is where buyers could possibly come in, soak some, uh, soak some sellers up, hold price, and go for a good push. Uh, if we're looking at this chart right here, this is the five-minute chart. We were long in here, and I flatted everything like in here. Like This is what we got here. And the reason why we, I mean, quote-unquote, only got this was because it was the last day of our Apex account, and we just wanted to... Um, uh, clean up the day, get the account, and, and that's that. But if you, left, if you leave runners on, or you really try to hold a piece on your trade, I mean, this turns into a huge trade. Like, we're in at like 91, 92, and this thing ran all the way up to uh, 37.50s, right? So you get like, this is like 60 points, 55, 60 point move. Even if you only get 30, 20 points, whatever it is, still great trade. Uh, so I want you guys if you guys are into footprints and volume stuff like this, start looking and marking up your high volume areas on your charts and, and see how they react. We've got a, a bunch of material on this online in our YouTube Unlisted and in our room every day. Um, it's, it's really good stuff and I highly recommend you guys look into it. I'll show you guys one last picture here because the recording was so bad. So this is also a markup right here of another day when we were trading, larger volume down at the lows. What are we trying to do? We're trying to wait for price to come back into high volume, get a reaction, and start moving up. This is on the one-minute chart, right? So we be we, 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 we tend to be a little bit more aggressive on taking money off when we're getting it on the one-minute chart because the time frame is so small, and likely these won't turn into huge long-term reversals, but they would be great scalp opportunities. With that being said, thanks for watching the video. I'm sorry it's been so long. I've uh, since I've got out a video, but uh, just that OBS has been driving me nuts. And uh, hopefully we'll be back at it, uh, steamrolling ahead with some more content. So as always, like, comment, subscribe. I will get back to all your comments, and I appreciate you guys watching the video. Hope you learned something. Take care.